I'm back, and I'm gonna pack up my things while I listen to the rest of this file. My brother has the nerve to say that he's actually going to go on another adventure as we speak. And if I'm able to catch up to him, I can make him listen to all this. Really, how can he be running around when all these people are trying to reach him? It must be a Tanifa. And... what is that? Wait right here. Let me see if I can get a closer look without it noticing me. Hold on, we'll go with you too. It's way too dangerous. Oh my god! It's huge! Mm, yes, be grateful this one doesn't have wings. So, it is a Tanifa. Yes, it resembles what many cultures would consider a dragon, but as you can see, it's more likely inspired by sharks or other ocean-based animals, so more so than reptiles. Although there are some Tanifa that are known to look like tree logs. Anyways, they originate from Maori traditions and they are usually known to appear in the ocean, or really any kind of body of water. But clearly they can come onto land as well. Their stories vary from predators to protectors, depending on which ones you meet. Okay, okay. Let's think positive. What are the protectors like? They are guardians, known to warn when enemies are around and save drowning humans. Their powers are so strong, it's believed that they still live among us in the Pacific today. Well, how can we tell whose side this one's on? Seeing as this one came charging at us before, I'd say it's probably a predator. Oh my god, then what was the point of all that info? I thought Alina liked to learn about all aspects of the creatures. <laughs> She got you there. Shut up. Okay, then what can you tell us about the bad ones? Well, luckily, a lot of them are in stories where hunters come and save the day. Okay, so how about you tell us a story about how these hunters defeated the Tanifa? The most famous one, of course, is Tutai Poroporo. It was said that he was originally a normal shark that was kept as a pet by a local chief, Tuariki. Huh. That's some pet. Jude, you have an alien as a pet, and she's kind of talking right now. Anyway, as time passed, Tutaya Poroporo started to grow in ways most sharks wouldn't, including parts like bat wings, a scaly tail, and claws like a hawk. Even his head changed, shapes look more like a bird's. At this point, Tuariki knew that his pet was a Tanifa. But then what happened? This is a story about killing a Tanifa, right? Sadly, yes. Unfortunately, the time spent with Tuariki would not last as he was later on murdered by a different tribe's warriors. Seeking revenge, the Tanifa swam close to the tribe and created a hideout in a cave, swallowing up people and their canoes if they got too close, slowly becoming a monster who craved human flesh. Oh, my gosh. Uh, that went dark? So, what did they do? They called for a famous hunter, Aokehu, who agreed to take down the beast. He and his men decided that the best way to kill the Tanifa was to trick it into eating Aokehu, who would then kill it from the inside out, using his spear. He ended up being able to also free the people and boats who had not yet been digested. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, I don't think we can pull any of that off. And I don't think anyone here wants to be eaten. Whoa, we're, we're actually going to fight it? We don't have any weapons. But we can't stay here forever either. There were other stories about hunters who helped handle the Tanifa. For us, we could try to bait it and attack it from behind. I can be the bait. I got us into this mess. I'll take responsibility. Wait, this is all happening so quickly. How could I let you be the bait? H hold on. I, I agree, June. That seems a bit extreme. Look, we don't need to defeat it. We just need to escape the Tanifa. So, let's think it over. We're currently hiding in a cornfield, and the Taifa doesn't know where we are, clearly, as it hasn't killed us yet, knock on wood, and all that. Uh, so, so, let's use the bait idea, but... Uh, the corn! Let, let, let's get a bunch of the corn, wrap the leaves together, and, and we'll chuck it 
Oh, oh wait, uh, towards the water. Hopefully, that'll be a big enough distraction so we can make a break for it? Does that sound like a plan? Let's Got do it. it. Come on, let's grab the corn. There's some over there. Let's go. Okay, I think we have enough corn. Uh, is, is everyone ready? Who has the best aim? Leave it to June. He actually has an exercise routine as he firmly believes he needs to be fit to be an astronaut. Hey, you know there's no such way for there to be such a thing as an unfit astronaut. <laughs> okay, guys, focus, all right? Now, where did the Tanifa go? There! I see it! Okay, the minute the Tanifa goes to check out the corn, we book it. No looking back. Let's do this. One, two, three! Okay, go, go, go. Come on, guys, hurry. Oh, shoot! You uh, notice us! Come on, quickly, we gotta go! Oh my god, we gotta spray behind me! Dog, get out of the way! Did you? No! Cerberus? There's, there's no way. Cerberus, get him back into the water. Sam, what are you doing here? I bumped into JD. They told me that they saw you... June? Do I know you? I... I... I, I can hear you. Do dog You're here too? It isn't what you think. This isn't the June that you know. Uh, Alina, you brought people into the park? S -s Sam, it's, it's not a big deal, okay? Please just... Let's go! <laughs> Alina! You're too close to those things! Get over here! Those things? June would never say something like that. <laughs> Sam, please just listen to me, okay? I, I just happened to bump into June and Dog at the park. Uh, uh, dog is from this park. It's it's really not a big deal. Whoa. Hey, man. Personal space. So I don't know how you know Sam? my name, oh my but God. I oh my God. don't oh God. know Cerberus. you. But, but I can hear you. While Cerberus is distracting the Tanifa, we need to escape. Now. Sam. Sam, are you listening to me? How... How is this ha How can this be? I, I don't know, man. Maybe this is just a big misunderstanding. No, I told you. You promised never to bring people here. Why are you yelling? I, I just happened to meet them, Sam. What's going on? You're scaring me. I should never have allowed you to come here. Oh, the tiny fa is gone now, but the three-headed dog is growling at us. Why is Jin here? Alina, Sam isn't listening to us anymore. We need to leave. Now. We can't just leave him like this. There's, there's literally a dark shadow growing around him. He'll be fine. That shadow means his cousin will be here shortly. I suggest we don't be here when a Greek demigod decides to show up. They always act before thinking. It'll just create more chaos. A demigod? Let's go, Alina. Now. But, Sam... Uh, that was not what I was expecting. First of all, the secret's out. Alina's at least. But Sam was acting really weird. Something about being able to hear? That's weird. Also, Sam seems to know my brother Junpei. But then Dog said it's not the Jun you know, so then... Junichi? Residents of Persephone Park is a production written and produced by Angela Yi, directed by Angela Yi. The voice of the narrator is Vita Shi. The voice of Alina is Angela Yi. The voice of Sam is G3. The voice of Drew is Ashley Dawson. The voice of the Kappa is Christine. The voice of June is Ben Polizzi. The voice of Dog is Sarah and Sarah Menendez. The voice of the Jersey Devil is Maddie. Dialogue edited by Angela Yi. Mixed and mastered by Angela Yi. Original music by Hua Pham. Season 1 cover art by Molly James. Series logo by Macy Tong. For more information about the show, please go to our website, residenceofperceptionapark.com, or visit us on social media at Park. Please visit again soon.